Morning Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. I'm Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Coming to you from what else? A cold and snowy gem city. It's Tuesday. Dwayne Long is here. Dwayne, Columbus Public Schools are closed. It's freezing cold in Columbus. That's good for the weather. How are you as a human being today? Well, uh, it's freezing cold and there's uh, about... 12 feet of snow, so uh, I'm done with winter. I'm already done. Let's get this over with and move on. This is just crazy. I'm done with winter as well, and in honor of that today, we are going to look back. On August 22nd, 2017, Dwayne and I did an extended BM5 and laid out our prediction preview extravaganza. Now, most people in this business would let those predictions go by the wayside or mold into the ether, but not here. We're going to go back and look at what we predicted to see just how smart or how dumb Dwayne and I are. It usually tends to come right down the middle there. And there's a lot of interesting stuff on here to certainly give you some perspective. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the question. There's about 10 of them on here. Let's see here. There's about 10 or 12 we can go over. I'm going to read the question. I'm going to read what our predictions were, and we can all have a good chuckle. Question one was, blank is the class of 2018 prospect committed to Ohio State I am most excited about. Dwayne, both you and I said Jalen Gill. Has that changed for you at all? I would say it has not for me. It, it really hasn't. This kid is so dy- dynamic because he missed so much time. Uh, and they really didn't have a lot of film of him. So much of it was practice stuff and scrimmage stuff, but when you see this kid, he just makes stuff happen. He is uh, ideal for the uh, wing back role. He catches the ball, and once he's got it in his hands, it's just you know get him now because you're not going to get him later. He's going to he is just going to run away from the defense. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this kid. You know, he missed last year with the injury, so uh, he and he committed early, so. Fans just really have not been exposed to Jalen Gill. Jalen Gill is a great get, a really great get in this class. Couldn't agree more. I fell in love with him off the sophomore tape, in which I don't know if I've ever seen a player uh, beat the seam or beat the angle better than he did. Just very impressive. Question two was, Blank is the class of 2018 prospect not committed to Ohio State I am most excited about. Here's where it didn't go too well. I said Micah Parsons. If you remember correctly, this was around the time that uh, there was a serious crystal ball rush on Micah when he made the he made a visit out here and everything seemed to be turning towards Ohio State way. I think Bill Curl with me even flipped his crystal ball. And obviously it didn't turn out that way uh, for whatever reasons. The recruiting did not go smoothly, and now Micah has ended up at Penn State. I was just excited about any time you have the premier defensive end rush guy, I'm going to be excited about it. So bad for me. Dwayne, your answer was, in quotes I have down here, hands down, Jackson Carmen, the best offensive lineman since Orlando Pace in Ohio. So put that in perspective now that he's headed to play for the Fighting Dabo Swinney's. And then, and then look at uh, the the senior year he had. Coming off uh, junior tape, he was just man, damn, this guy, this kid. You know, if he ever returns to that form, we're gonna we're gonna hate on this kid uh, for the rest of his life for not coming to Ohio State. Uh, at this point, it just really doesn't look that promising. He's sloppy. You know, we heard all last fall just. You know, this this kid, what's going on here? He was overweight. He was sloppy. He was not playing hard. Uh, and then we saw him, actually saw him in the All-Star game. He got whipped like a, like a rented mule all game, and he did look overweight and sloppy. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of work there. We know what the raw potential is. We saw it as a junior when he was in shape. Playing with a high motor, uh, super athletic kid for his size, and uh, you know he was just he was that good. I stand by that statement at that time. 
uh, what's happened since then. Uh, he's out there big time in it, not not focused, not uh, putting in work, uh, and uh, he's a legend in his own mind right now. So we'll see what he does. We'll see if they can light a fire under him, get him back to the to the player he was as a sophomore and junior. There's only so many dudes that big that can move that way. Um, and you got to assume Clemson's – got to give them credit for their player development and what they've done so far. So I have to assume he'll be okay there. To say that there was negative whispers coming out about him during the senior year, that would be a gross understatement. So i got to echo what you said there. Question four was, blank – yeah, we can't do that. It's a, it's a draft one. Next one. At season's end, blank will be considered the best player on Ohio State's team. Dwayne's answer was Tyquan Lewis. My answer was Nick Bosa. I think I'm right. What do you think, Dwayne? Uh, I, I would go along with that. I mean, there's an argument for uh, for uh, Ward in that uh, in that slot uh, right now. Uh, <clears throat> There's such a mixed feeling in Buckeye Nation about him for not playing in the bowl game, uh, but uh, you know there's there's an argument for Ward. Bosa is all Big Ten and he's not a starter. That says a lot about what Nick Bosa was uh, this year. Lewis was not. Lewis was he seemed to peak as a junior. You know he had a good senior year. But junior year, he was uh, the Big Ten's uh, defensive lineman of the year. And I thought he'd get nothing but better. And, and uh, you know, like I said, he had a good year, but he was not what he was when he was uh, as a junior. He wasn't as good as he was when he was junior. Or let's say he was as good. He just wasn't the best player on the defense. He wasn't the best player on the team. I mean, there's an argument for, uh, uh, for Dobbins, either. Billy Price. Uh, sure. in, front of, in front of Tyquan Lewis. Yeah, I thought in terms of consistent excellence, if you're going like play by play, obviously sometimes it's difficult to judge linemen from the sidelines, but if you look at like the pro football focus evaluations and stuff, Nick Bosa is as good as it gets. You want to see an onslaught of coverage. You wait till next year when Nick Bosa is coming back. And every preview article written knows his name. And just kind of like Billy Price got to enjoy the tour this year, being the most well-known name and all the accolades. Nick Bosa is going to be on every cover. He's going to be mentioned on every All-American team. Um, everybody covering the sport knows the name, thanks to his brother. And you take the brand of Ohio State combined. Nick Bosa is going to be – he's going to get his share of credit here starting very soon once, once we shift to preview mode. And then he'll spend one year here and be a top five pick in the draft, barring injury. All right. Question, next question. Next season, meaning 2018, Greg Schiano will be a blank coach at blank. Now, this turned out to be a, a prescient question in that he obviously was thinking about a move. His tenure at Tennessee is not one that will go down in the annals of college football history, but it was interesting, so – it's clear that Shiano was a target. My answer was head coach at Arizona State. Um, I thought the Arizona State coach would get fired. He did. I did not think they would replace him with Herm Edwards, but uh, both Arizona jobs came open, so I was 0 for 2 there. But it was worth a try. Your answer was correct. Defensive coordinator at Ohio State. It looks like it will be that way. What's your vibe on Shiano? Do you think this will be his last year in Columbus, if, if we even get to that, given the number of defensive coordinator openings around the NFL right now? Well, see, I think it's – he really – it was a setback for him, not just losing the uh, the Tennessee job, but it looked like it had it. he had it. Uh, we have to look at his uh, brand being damaged by all that negative publicity that came off of that. There's going to be schools that are going to say, hey, we don't want – we're not going to get into that. Uh, I mean, let's let's just state it for what it is. The the Penn State uh, child abuse scandal is probably how can you not say it's it's not the the biggest scandal in the in the history of college sports? That's just absolutely appalling, disgusting. Uh, it's an abomination, and his name is attached to it now. 
it was at the time we did our research. We know that he really did. I mean, if you look at the at the facts that we know about that, Chowder didn't have anything to do with it. He didn't have no knowledge of it. That was just hearsay brought up by somebody else. It, it's it's his name. It's really a shame that he's associated with it because he didn't have anything to do with it. But and we're happy with it. We're fine with it. We don't care what anybody else thinks. We know that he is not involved with that in any way, shape, or form. Others may just say, we don't want that association. We just don't want it. So, uh, I, Dan, he could be here longer than we think for that reason. Just uh, It's, it's going to take a while for that to go away again. So, uh, you know, maybe the NFL – which I think I've always believed he really would rather go back to the NFL. Maybe the NFL would would uh, take him. Otherwise, I don't know. He he could be here indefinitely. We don't know. Yeah, I think defensive coordinator in the NFL or some NFL gig is the most likely spot. Unfortunately, the public nature of the Tennessee fiasco is probably – made him a non-starter for any other college program that's, you know, I'm sure he could go take over a small, smaller school or a Division II thing and not get the uh, public abuse. But it's just a shame. Um, we benefited from him coming back, obviously, but certainly the addition of the Grinch from Washington State means they know Shiano. They either know Shiano is eventually going to be gone, or they just needed someone in here to be his understudy, but uh, I think it's the former. Okay. The next question was, blank is the Buckeye most likely to transfer after this season? My choice was Antonio Williams. Yours was a combo of Dylan Thompson and Jay Sean Cornell. All are back on some level. Dylan Thompson's one to watch. I think Cornell and Williams will be back. Jack Wollabaugh has transferred. It's really been more of the lineman types. I'm not really sure what there is much to say about this one. Do you think there's still any guys left that we could see transfer? Or do you think we're pretty much we know who's up? Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to say that we're done. I just got a feeling we're going to see a couple of more guys step away from here. I just got a feeling um, could be uh, could be linemen in particular that could be uh, moving on from here. Okay. I, I'm not going to be surprised. And Antonio Williams, especially after a spring ball, you know, uh, I tell you this, I, I think at best he's going to be here one more year because when uh, Snead and, and uh, Tate get here, he's, he's going to be number five on the depth chart. So, uh, you know, no more than one more year. But he could just decide, you know, I'm third here. I'm not going to be anything better than number three. Uh, let me get on somewhere where I can play football. He played pretty well when he got in there this year. So yeah, I was going to say yeah. Know, so he's a good player. You know he could. Yeah, yeah. He ended up being a, a good number three for us, but it's not going to it's not going to stay that way. So he could move on. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Mostly it's in the line. I think we could we could still lose some more guys by the time spring's over. Uh, yeah, Kevin Fetter's moving on and such. So, yeah, guys who – that's the the easiest spot is you just look at a, a guy who's been jumped on the depth chart. That was my theory behind Antonio Williams, even though he's, he's a younger guy. Good back. I just don't think he started Ohio State good given the depth chart and what we got coming in. Okay, here's where we get to the uh, interesting stuff here. Question seven was, the biggest threat in Ohio State's 2000 – the biggest threat – on Ohio State's 2017 schedule is, Dwayne said, Penn State. I said, at Iowa. Now, it's hard to say either one of us was wrong, given the fact the Penn State game was a thriller that came down to the end. But I will say that, uh, as it turns out, they did lose the Oklahoma game. Neither one of us thought that. But at Iowa, to me, just when I looked at the schedule, it's one of those games, I mean, I, I, no, mind you, I did not expect it to be the debacle that it was, but kind of like Penn State at Iowa this year, they're a tough team that plays much better at home, and um, it was going to be their Super Bowl. 
So as it turns out, I was right on that one, Dwayne, your view of the schedule and Iowa being the kerfuffle this year. Well, I really was surprised by Oklahoma. We beat them the year before, beat them clearly at their place, and I thought we were going to be a better team. That we, uh, you know, that's that's a, a laying an egg too. It's not as big as Iowa, but uh, we did not perform in that game. We just didn't. Offensively, we did. Defensively, uh, they killed us throwing the ball to backs and uh, tight ends, and we never adjusted to that. Just like at Iowa, they killed us with the tight end and backs, and we never adjusted to it. So. Uh, you know, the, the, I, I imagine uh, that that they I will watch the the Oklahoma game. Said, uh, yeah, here's a formula for beating them, and we never adjusted to that. But I just I was really surprised at Oklahoma too. I thought we would handle them. I really wasn't concerned about Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, Penn State. I was the same I, way. I, yeah, yeah. I just did not see that coming. That, that they would be, uh, and they were clearly the better team here, like we were there last year. So, yeah, the uh, uh, you know I I was just surprised, almost as surprised as I was losing to Iowa. Next question, and we both blew this one. Blank is the Buckeye that will surprise everyone this season. I let my DMV vibe take over here and chose Keandre Jones. Now, I will say he's a linebacker, and the linebacker play was not very good, and I hope that means Keandre Jones isn't – I hope Keandre Jones is better than what I thought. Let me redo that. I hope that means Keandre Jones is just waiting his spot because I would like to see him in there this year. He obviously did not do much, even on special teams, so that was a flaming miss by me. Dwayne, your choice was J.T. Barrett. You thought this would be the year he would turn everybody's mind back to the old J.T. He did not do that. What's your vibe quickly on J.T.? Well, I'm I'm saying that I got it half right because for part of the year, J.T. Barrett. I mean, he even his name even came up again with the uh, with the high. That's true. That's you know, true. Later in the year. So uh, he had he rebounded with better coaching, better offense. And, uh, you know, the the thing I'll always say about J.T. Barrett is he never gets credit for how much he did here. But that is, you know, it's not fans being unfair. It's when you look at the losses we've had and, and the tough games, games that were tougher than they should have been, he's also been so integral with that. You know, it's it's not like we're just we just lost games or or we didn't play well. You can specifically look at Barrett not playing well in those games. So and that's what fans remember. So you know, we have huge fights. How many fights? Nobody has had more threads started about him than J T. Barrett in the last couple of years. He was, there's no doubt about that, and it really goes back to the fact that fans are seeing the negatives in him, and he was. He was, you know, and it, it wasn't just the team didn't play well. So often when we lost football games, I mean, can, can you think of a game that we lost or a game that, uh, you know, it was tougher than it should have been, that Barrett had a really good game? He wasn't key to the bad game. Uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head. It, it always came back to Barrett just not being good enough in those games. It's true, and it's going to be very interesting to see how he's viewed from here on out by uh, the Ohio State faithful. I have a feeling that once, I don't want to say the sting, but the, when the vibe of the season wears off, I think he'll be you know, loved by the fans and such, and I can see him coming back and making a, making a career in Columbus of some sort, but going to be a lightning he had like you said there's never been a more lightning rod player i will not miss the uh front row and jt barrett's relationship over the last 18 months finishing up soon here blank will lead the buckeyes in receptions this season 
Dwayne chose Johnny Dixon. I chose Terry McLaurin. Here's how it actually finished up. K.J. Hill led the team with 56 receptions. Paris Campbell, 40. Terry McLaurin, 29. Marcus Spott, 28. Austin Mack, 24. Johnny Dixon had a good year um, in limited action that his knees would allow him. He was kind of the touchdown maker earlier on in the year. And I think Terry McLaurin was fine, but K.J. Hill definitely emerged. I'm not sure we need to talk about that one too much. We both agreed on this. Question 11, the best opposing player Ohio State will face this season is? We both said Saquon Barkley. We were both right. Um, question 13. I think there's an forward. argument. I think there's a, 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 an argument from Baker Mayfield. He, uh, okay. he really, you know, he beat us. Uh, Saquon Bar- Barkley did not. And we shut him down. He had the kickoff return. <clears throat> I think he had a couple of plays in the passing game. We held him to about 40 yards rushing. So I think there's a better argument for Baker Mayfield uh, uh, being the, the best player we played against this year. That's fair. That's a fair statement. If you're asking me who the best player they played against was, it was Barkley. Who played best against them? No question. It was Baker yeah. Mayfield. That's a really good point by you. We predicted Michigan will win blank regular season games this season. I said nine. You said eight. The correct answer is eight. Man, that's not good. Uh, um, I will tell you this, and I, want to, I don't want to say wildest dreams because I don't dream about people's failure. I never thought Harbaugh would struggle to the level he has since he's been there. I, I touted the fact that he's been able to develop. This guy took a quarterback at the University of San Diego, I think his name was Josh Johnson, and made him a pro. Everywhere he had gone, every quarterback he had touched had gotten better, and he has not been able to do that at Michigan when it seemed like he had more control over the situation. So it's surprising how poorly he's doing. Uh, I've always thought he's going to end up being the coach of the Colts. What's your thought on Harbaugh and the fact that Michigan just really has not turned the corner? Well, uh, I also think about uh, the hand he was dealt. You know, you came out of Rich Rod trying to, trying to change the system and put his kind of players in. Then Hope came in and never – really got the, the, the recruiting machine going. He doesn't have any players, Dan. He really does not have players. Yes, he's, he's performed miracles with quarterbacks in the past. Those guys, are they're bad. And, you know, he's got some good defensive players. But uh, his offense, who would start at Ohio State or Penn State, even Michigan State? Definitely not the quarterback. Maybe Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, that's the standard answer. Yeah. You know, he just doesn't have any talent. He's got to get the recruiting machine going. And he hasn't really done that. Now that's where you have to look and say, Okay, what's going on? Because his recruiting class this year is just uh okay, all right. We would be absolutely the boards would be aflame if we brought in the class he brought in. Oh, my Lord, yep. It would be terrible. So, uh, he's just not recruiting well. And the, the, the man is just an oddball. And I wonder if that's starting to surface when he's going into the homes of these recruits who actually do have uh, offers from schools as big as Michigan or bigger. You know, because right now there are bigger schools than Michigan. One time, Michigan was a crown jewel of college football the same as Ohio State. Not anymore. And uh, you got this really strange dude at the at the head of the program. So uh, even his brother publicly said he's always been weird. So maybe that's catching up with him. I hope. It's funny to watch, I'll tell you that much. Here was uh, okay, we both let's we can go quickly through the last one couple here. We uh, Penn State will win blank regular season games this season you said 10, I said 9, you were right. Uh, I'm impressed with what Penn State has done, I have to admit. Let's see them do it again without Barkley, but um, very impressed. And to be fair, Penn State, Franklin has very much improved them on the recruiting trail. So that tends to have an elastic effect, too. We'll finish yeah, it off you here. Also have to, you also have Go to ahead. look at them losing their offensive coordinator. That's going to be huge. That guy was very impressive, very innovative. Yeah, more head to Mississippi State. Yeah. Yeah, 
it's the first sign for for Franklin. Obviously, he took the, the program over, and good lord, what he had to fight against history wise, recent history wise, was tough. But now that had some success, and people are starting to pilfer their staff and such. Uh, keeping that going is difficult. It's something Urbis, Urbis struggled at times with replacing guys on his staff, so it's no easy job. Last question was, the four college football playoff teams will be and who will win the championship game? Obviously, the correct answer was Clemson, Georgia, Oklahoma, Alabama, and then Alabama over Georgia. Dwayne's choices were Ohio State, Bama, USC, and Florida State, with Ohio State beating Bama in the championship. Mine was Ohio State, Bama, Clemson, and Washington with OSU and the band in the championship game. Obviously, it didn't work out that way. I don't think we're going to spend too much time talking about this. Bama won again, and that set the bar pretty high. So we all know what we're aiming for. We hope you enjoyed that review of the preview prediction extravaganza. We will do this whenever we can and look back and show that we really don't know much more than you guys. Have a good one, Buckner.